To help me in my quest for, uh, for in the art of seduction, right? And to help other men in my plight, I've come up with Paul Carf's guide to the ancient art of seduction for the sensitive caring male. Right. The first thing, gentlemen, don't be cocky. Right? We can't all swan round like we're David Essex. <laughs> and it's, it's the little things that count, you know. Not wiping your nose on your sleeve. <laughs> Stifling your farts so they seep out. <laughs> It's difficult, isn't it? But you've got to take the trouble. Yeah. When she's gone, you can let rip. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Be polite. Be polite. It's no good just going up saying, hi, darling, can I shag you? Right? It don't work. I've tried it. Right? <laughs> you've got to sweet talk them. Hello, what's your name? My name's Paul. Can I shag you? Please. <laughs> <Yeah>. Very important. <clears throat> Uh, think safe sex, very important. Safe sex. Take precautions. Put your fag out. <laughs> Move your cans where they won't get knocked over. <laughs> For fuck's sake, remember the name. <laughs> Fuck, you know. Write it down. <laughs> On the back, if need be. <laughs> I just keep a biro by the bed, you know. Keep using the name to lock it in your memory, you know. You've, you've got nice tits, Denise. You've got a nice ass, Denise. Will you suck me up, Denise? Do you know what I mean? Make it personal. Don't just jump in there. Do you know, foreplay is important. Tease them, they like to be teased, you know. Have a bit of a nap, you know. <laughs> put, put some toast on, you know. Get her to give you a shout when she's ready. You know. <laughs> Food can be very sexy. Food's very sexy. Nine and a half weeks, you see that? Very sexy. Eat some melted chocolate off a tummy. It's really nice. Or ice cream, something like that. Or ready break, you know. <laughs> I, I had a full English breakfast the other day. <laughs> Eggs, bacon, beans, tomatoes, sausage, uh, black pudding, mushrooms, slice of fried bread, two slices of toast and a cup of tea. She's a big girl. <laughs> she it after the show, I can't wait. I'm fucking starving. <laughs> Role play, that's good. When you pretend to be someone when you're having sex, like you could pretend to be like a motor mechanic and she could be like a Ford Escort, you know, with a flat battery or something like that. You know. Might be a faulty alternator, you don't know. Get underneath, have a look. You know. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you, you could pretend to be Jonathan King, she could be Jonathan King, and you could both fuck off. <laughs> so, I, so, so, I, so, I, so I, I, I'm, I'm a bit under the weather. I've had some bad news a couple of months ago. My dad died. It's very sad. He had a heart attack watching Baywatch. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even what he wanted, you know. <laughs> but, you know, when he was alive, I used to look at him and think, you sad, pissed-up old fucker. <laughs> you know, there but for the grace of God. <laughs> <laughs> but I often think of him up there, you know, in the everlasting pub in the sky where they never call time. Laughing, singing, dancing, playing darts with St. Peter, goosing the angels, <laughs> doing his Elvis impression to Elvis. <laughs> you know, everyone's fucking tits as usual. <laughs> but you know what, right? Do you know what I've been doing? I've been listening to the radio a lot recently. Because the radio helps you come to terms with bad news, doesn't it? Because they have the news like every hour. It's good, like you might hear at like 11 o'clock news here, some bloke's been murdered, and you think, oh, poor fucker. Yeah. <laughs> then it's 12 o'clock, some bloke's been murdered. Yeah. 1 o'clock, some bloke's been murdered. Every hour, some bloke... You know, by dinner time the next day, you think, oh, fuck him. 